clear skies tonight, so you know what that means. It's Steve with the Energy in Space, and last night it was cloudy. Tonight it's going to be clear, and I can see that my neighbor already has his outside light on. It's daylight, dude. Give me a freaking break. Anyway, uh, last night it was cloudy, <clears throat> and um, so what I thought I would do is take advantage of those cloudy skies and shoot calibration frames. I know, super boring, but they are super necessary. Uh, so when I'm talking about calibration frames, I'm talking about the flat frames, bias frames, and dark frames. And essentially, you know, I could, there's a deep dive on those, but the uh, long and the short of it is they help cancel out photographic inconsistencies. Yeah. <clears throat> so the picture that you're, or the image, the target that you have, it's showing up, the signal, or its signal, is showing up in your image every time every sub but stuff like camera read noise and hot noise from your sensor and that temperature and light pollution gradients or image train gradients those kind of things are inconsistent so what we do is we shoot pro uh, calibration frames to help cancel those out so your uh, light pollution you know gradients of the moon um, if you've got some vignetting caused by your imaging train then that's what your flat frame is uh, going to cancel out. Um, inherent read noise within the sensor, that's for your bias frame to cancel out. And the heat noise, the temperature sensor noise, uh, all that other kind of stuff, all that other kind of noise really gets canceled out with your dark frames. So let's get over here to the imaging computer. And I'm going to show you what I did last night. So last night I shot my darks, my flats, and my bias and because I'm using a cooled astronomy camera um, I'm able to set that temperature and shoot all my dark so while I'm in bed last night and it's cloudy out I shot 56 minute subs so the more darks you shoot uh, the more calibration frames you shoot the better and they're boring I know but you gotta have them you gotta have them, people if you want really good images you gotta have them so we'll go over here to the MG computer I'll show you what I did last night, kind of run through uh, how I take each one of those, the two programs that I use to take the three different sets of calibration frames. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to actually show you how to calibrate, calibrate your calibration frames. Yeah, that's a thing. I'm going to show you how to do that in PixInsight so that you create three master, master calibration frames to add to your light frames when you're integrating everything so that would be not only is it a bias it's a super bias it's like it's like a hero bias super bias uh, the flat frames for your lights or for your lights for your flats uh, master flats and master dark frame how to calibrate all those okay so let's get over here to the imaging computer all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is get over here to um, first program and I'm gonna shoot my flats I'm going to open up an uh, astrophotography tool. And while that's opening up, with my flats, I want to stretch, you know, take the lens cap off, stretch a white, she's always interrupted, stretch a white t shirt over the end of the OTA. And what that white t shirt does is it diffuses, diffuses, diffuses the light. So it gives you a nice, even, flat light that's hitting your sensor. Uh, stretch that over and make sure it's tight. Make sure you get all the wrinkles out of that uh, t-shirt. And then once I have that nice and tight, I do not use natural light. I use a light panel that's USB powered. And I found that putting it on the lowest setting is uh, probably the best, or is the best, not probably, but it is the best for me. Uh, otherwise it blows out and it doesn't hit my target ADU. So once I have those two things uh, applied to the end of the OTA, it's vertical, so it's nice and flat, then I get over here to Nina, or not Nina, but actually APT, 
And uh, my APT starts out and wants to cool the camera down because I used to use this for imaging, but I'm going to um, cancel that setup. I'm not going to cool the camera. That's really important because we're not cooling the camera for flats. We're going to shoot it at the ambient temperature. Um, and the tool that I use here in APT found in tools uh, is called CCD Flats Aid. Click that. I've got my target ADU set to 7000. That's going to be something you're going to want to look up in your camera specs on what to use. I've got an ADU range of 5%, so it's going to get within 5% of that 7000. I've got minimum exposure at 0.01 seconds and a maximum exposure at 5 seconds. And I'm bending one by one. And uh, I'm using these filters, so you want to make sure that your filter wheel is connected if you're using a filter wheel. This 5 to 7 means my fifth position filter is my sulfur, my sixth position filter is my hydrogen, and seventh position filter is oxygen. All right, so I would change, I'm going to change the count to actually 30. So that is going to be 30 flats per filter. Um, and once I hit the run button here, it's going to shoot uh, a set of test exposures for each filter to find the perfect exposure length. And once that exposure length is found, it will then say, do you want to change the plan? It creates a plan. Do you want to change it by clicking yes? Or do you want to keep it by clicking no? I do not want to change it. And then I would uh, go to the camera tab and I would see my plan set up and click the start button and that would begin taking all my flats and then I just uh, I chill and I wait and I let that get done. So I know that's kind of a stripped down simple version of flats but that's basically how to set your scope up to take them and actually taking them here in astrophotography tool super easy you just let the you let the software choose the best exposure length and you fire away and then you collect them. Alright so bias frames. What do bias frames do? Well all your sensors uh, have an inherent read noise and it comes as like vertical banding and you can really see it when you calibrate them and so what bias frames do is they reduce that or cancel that out or average it out whatever phrase you want to use um, and how do you set your scope up for bias frames it's real simple lens cap on hmm. I'm using a filter wheel and in the eighth position of my filter wheel I have a dark frame just a solid black frame I bought from Amazon, I think, uh, and that helps give me just even better uh, light seclusion. Come on, it was all kinds of fancy words today, ain't I? Anyway, it, it uh, really ensures that I have a nice dark um, image to take for those bias. And what uh, what APT does over here, if you go in the camera and you go to edit, um, do this little drop down list here, all the way down, bias frames. So you can just click here, actually, let me click on one I've already done. So when you say add new bias frame plan, you can do that. Um, you can enter your exposure, but basically what your exposure needs to be is the fastest exposure that your camera can take, whether it's a DSLR or a dedicated astronomy camera. Uh, find out what that time is and you're going to enter that in here. You would want to, let's choose really quick one I've already done. Yeah, these flat frames are like go here down to Orion. So this is the fastest time that my camera, or speed shutter speed that my camera has. I'm bending one by one. I'm gonna pause a second, and I'm gonna do 20. I try to do 50 bias frames for every image. And bias frames are really cool because you don't have to shoot those each time. You can actually create a library, and the only time you would want to change your bias frame is if you're changing your ISO or you're changing your gain or offset. That's pretty much it. Other than that, you can shoot them once and reuse them. Uh, create a master bias, which I'll show you how to do at the end of the video here. And um, you can just apply that to every new uh, image that you take. All right, so lastly, we have uh, dark frames. And for dark frames, I actually use the software program that I use to capture my images, and that is Nina. Um, so let's expand this here. So dark frames, how do you set your scope up for dark frames? Same as bias. You want the lens cap on. Like I said, I have, a, I have some light leak in my Newtonian, so I want the, um, uh, the filter wheel to rotate around a position 8 that has my dark filter in it. 
to ensure I just have the darkest uh, image possible. So we're going to connect the camera. Now here's the thing about dark frames. Dark frames require the temperature to be um, as close to the temperature that you shot your lights at. So for me using a dedicated cool astronomy camera, that's easy. I can just dial up the temperature I want. If you're shooting a DSLR and let's say you're in Celsius and you're shooting 18 degrees Celsius, you know, obviously that's going to warm up. It could be 30 degrees when you go to actually shoot your darks if you don't shoot them right after at night. So you may have to wait until it gets dark. You have to put your camera in a refrigerator. I've done that. Put it in a dark room with the air conditioner on. You know, you're going to have to try to match that temperature because if you don't, if you're 10 or 15 degrees off, um, your dark frames are going to look like crap. They're, they're not going to work well. Trust me. I've tried it. I've tried to cheat. This is a corner. I've tried to cut it. <laughs> so let's go in here to the sequencer and um, we're just going to set up a generic plan. Um, last night I shot 50 dark frames and the dark frames have to be the same length as your light frame. So I shot 6 minutes, 360 seconds, so we have to change this to 360. And that's kind of why uh, calibration frames are so boring, because you're just taking dark pictures. Um, I want to change my filter to the dark position 8. I'm going to call this a dark uh, frame, so under type. The bidding is one by one. I'm not worried about dither. <laughs> Um, and once I have that set, all this other stuff doesn't apply because we're not slewing the target, we're not doing any of that. So once the camera reaches the uh, target temperature, then we would just click run and walk away. Set it and forget it. So dark frames, if you're shooting a target and you don't have time that night, you know, maybe wait till the next night. If you got some clouds, that's a good time. You know, for me, I'm shooting narrowband projects, so I'm shooting, um, multiple nights so if there's a night in between like I'm having right now where it's dark I've got a front coming through and it's cloudy you know take advantage of that shoot those dark frames yeah tonight I'm gonna get out there I'm gonna shoot some uh, more on the monkey head nebula and guess what I just got a new scope in <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy I can't believe it so definitely stay tuned for a new scope video and uh, yeah, I'm also an OPT affiliate now, so check out the link below. If you go to OPT, buy anything, I get a little something something, and I can always use something something. When I'm done, I'm going to go over here to uh, PixInsight and show you how to calibrate all these uh, uh, calibration frames. And calibrate them into a master frame. So, stay tuned. Okay, so here we are in PixInsight, and as I promised, I'm going to show you a very manual way of of uh, stacking and calibrating and creating master uh, calibration frames that you can either use in, in um, Deep Sky Stacker or you can use in the uh, WMB PP script or anything, any program that you're using that you eat, you know, you need calibration frames. This will help you uh, understand kind of what's going on. It's a very manual process and I'll link the uh, the website that I got all these instructions. I've got them all written down off camera here. Um, but uh, I'll link the website to the Light Vortex. That's where I follow their step-by-step -step instructions. So let's just get started. Let's create three master calibration frames to integrate with our lights. And the first, uh, first set we want to work on is our bias. We want to create a master bias and a super bias, remember? Super bias. So I'm going to come up here to process and we're going to go down to image integration. So we want to add our files, calibration frames, bias. Double click that, select the top one, control A, we'll select them all, and click open. Uh, and to start out with, let's see what we got here. We've got a combination of average, um, normalizing, uh, we have it set to none, no normalizing. Uh, weight levels, we don't care. We don't care where our weights are. I hope you don't mind me looking at my notes. I don't need them. This is pretty. This is a pretty intense. It's a pretty manual process. Um, so weights don't care. And let's see what else. And our rejection. Let's go down here to pixel rejection. Let's open that up. 
and we do want to reject. And because we have more than 10 biased, I've got 50 biased. Because we have more than 10, we're going to select Windsorize Sigma Clipping. Okay. Let's raise that back up so we can see. And that's basically it. So once we have those settings, we have all of our bias frames loaded in here. We're just going to click this Apply Global. Okay, so what image integration has done is it's created three individual frames here. It's showing the high rejection. We close that out, showing a low rejection. This is your integrated image here. So all 50 frames are now integrated into this image. That's at the screen transfer. So you can see this is basically the readout noise of the ASI 1600. You see this vertical banding in here. Okay. So this is what we want to eliminate from all of our subs. So this is going to integrate into our light frames and basically cancel out this pattern noise. I don't know if you can see it here in YouTube. Um, so let's minimize image integration because we're going to use that. And now we are going to create a super bias. So let's come up here to uh, process. Let's go to all processes. Go to S. If you don't know where something is, it's always al alphabetized. So we have super biased. Let's open it up. And everything is default in the super bias here. I'm not going to change anything. But what we are going to do is uh, apply that to our master bias frame. So just drag this little instance off. Drag it on here. And we will we will get a super bias. Here we go. Look at that. Close that down to the screen transfer function. Look at that. Look at the difference. So much more detail. Pattern noise. Uh, let's see if we can hit that 24 button and kind of smooth that out. Now we really get, you can see this is kind of grainy, but this is really uh, inherent to my camera and this will all get rejected out of the images. So this is your bias frame. We can close this so-so like Clark Kent bias. We're going to open up the Superman bias. See this guy? We're going to go over here to file, save as, and we want to save it as a pixel site file, XISF file. And we're going to go in here to calibration frames and we're just going to save it as supervised. Look. Every time I say that, I just hear Rick James. Save it as a 32 bit. Click OK. OK, so we can close that out. And let me turn the page. So now. We've created our bias and we want to create a master dark frame and we want to go into image calibration. So basically the image integration is going to combine all the data together to one frame, one frame, not football, go bucks. It's going to combine it into one frame. Calibration is calibrating each individual frame in preparation of combining it into one frame. All right, so we're going to go here to process. We're going to come to image calibration, image calibration. We want to add our dark file. So let's click add files. Go in here to the darks folder. Select the top one, control A. And open. So all of our dark frames are loaded up. We want to turn off master dark because we don't have, we're creating a master dark and we're going to turn off master flat. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that master super bias to all each individual dark frame. So we want to find that um, file that we created, that XISF file, super biased. Let's click it, click open. And what this is going to do is now it's going to take these FITS files and it's going to create uh, uh, Pixensight XISF files that are calibrated. And we want them to go to a folder that we know where it's at. So what we're going to do is we're going to right here where it says output directory, we're going to select that folder. Um, always takes you back to the last place you were at. So in the dark folder, 
let's just create a folder. New folder. I'm going to call that Calib Calibrated. Select that. All right, so the folder's been selected. We've created it. Um, nothing much to do here other than we want master bias checked. And I think everything else is all default in here, correct? Yes. Yes, it is. Let's check my notes. Um, so yeah, we're going to uncheck. We want to make sure that that the master dark and flats are unchecked. Okay. So the last thing to do is apply global and applying global. Now this super bias is going to average out its noise in all of our dark frames, each individual one. It's going to create uh, 50 calibrated dark frames. All right. So that's done. Um, we want to minimize that. These are your two main tools, calibration and integration. So we're going to open up image integration, clear it out. We're going to add files. So we're going to go to that folder that we created here in darks, calibrated. Here they all are. When they got this little uh, diamond shape, you know that's synonymous with Pixel Sight. You know you've done it right. So Control A selects them all, click open. Um, and we want to leave all of this, the settings that we have for the bias, we leave them alone. So Windsorized, um, except for we are going to uncheck low clip low range. And then now we want to apply global. So we're going to take all of these calibrated dark frames and an individual, and we're going to create one master frame out of that by just applying global. Okay, so we've created, once again, we've got our rejection. So this is our high rejection. Yeah. Let's close it down. It's our low rejection. And let's close it down. So this is our master dark frame. And look, you can see that uh, readout noise that's showing up in the dark frames. This is stretch. Basically, I've stretched this frame. But you can definitely see some of that readout noise. And all this stuff's going to get canceled out, especially when we do our flats. So, um... F12, kill that. So we come back up here to file, save as, and let's just call this master dark. Cool. XSIF, XISF. You know what I mean. Quick save. 32 bit, accept that. Now, close it down. Same thing, we're going to, let's just go ahead and clear that tool out. Minimize it. Okay. Let's open up image calibration. Let's clear that. So what we're going to do now is we are going to calibrate our individual flat frames. We've got hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And we're going to use a master bias and now master dark. So let's check that. Let's go find that master dark file that we just created. Select it. Open. Um, we want a new output directory. That's where I really suck is remembering these output directories. When you're doing this manually, it's a lot of folders. But it's good to go through this just to kind of see how what's going on behind the scenes when you use these more automated pr uh, programs like the batch preprocessing or weighted batch preprocessing or Deep Sky Stacker even. Um, and, and I can tell you this, from doing this manual method, I noticed that my master uh, calibration frames tend to uh, work better. They integrate better into my lights than when I do the more automated processes. So let's uh, create a output folder. So let's go in here at flats. We're going to create three folders. We're going to say HA. And we're going to say S2. And we're going to say, oh, three. Okay. So our first output folder is going to be our HA. Select that folder. So we're basically saying that when we add these files, let's go to our flats. There's our three folders we created. Let's go to our flats. It didn't take many. I think I took 20. Shift. Now I've opened up all of my flats. Um, refer to the notes so I want to add the flats 
So the notes say everything's good. We've got our directory. We've got our master bias loaded in. We've got our master dark loaded in. And we wanna leave optimize selected. We don't have a flat because if we were to continue on and we had our light frames, we would have our light frames in here and we would have master flat checked. And we would use the bias, the dark and the flat against each light frame. So it's kind of a, a, a one-step process. You start with your bias, you go to your darks, then you go to your flats. But we're calibrating flats, so we don't need this check. So now we just hit apply global. And we're gonna calibrate each one of our HA flats using the master bias and the master dark. Okay, so our hydrogen flats have been calibrated. So let's minimize that tool. Now we're gonna integrate them. See the process? You get in the rhythm here? Uh, so we're gonna add the files. We're gonna go to HA. Look, here they are. Select them all. Open. Um, and for that, a little bit of different settings here. Let's run down through the settings. Uh, we want our combination, let's see here. Combination set to average, which we have. Uh, normalization, we wanna set it to multiplicative because typically your gradients are added. So in flats, you, like I've said before, your, um, your light pollution gradients, your vignetting gradients are added as multiplicative. They're added to the image. So we want to normalize that by selecting multiplicative. That's the difference with the, um, the flats. Um, let's, check, let's check down through the list here. So our weight is still set to I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't say I don't care. Evaluate noise is selected. And so our integration settings are, are good here. So we're going to generate an immigrant image. We're going to generate an integrated image. <laughs> um, so let's minimize that. We're going to come in here to pixel rejection. Our rejection algorithm is going to be set to percentile percentile clipping and normalization is so our clip low range is unselected just like the rest of them um, so that's basically the settings I think we're good so let's go ahead and once again let's apply a global and in doing that we are now integrating our image to have one master HA flat. Pretty quick. So you can see our uh, high rejection, close it down, our low rejection, close it down. So this is our master HA flat. So let's put a stretch on it. Ha ha, look at that. Told you. Vin, geosilent, vignetting, vin, vignet, vignetting. Uh, so there's the vignetting, and there's like a little, look, little dust mode. So that little dust mode and this vignetting is going to cancel out of our light frames. Dig it. Uh, so let's select the image, file, save as. And we can name that HA flat. Save 32 bit. Okay. Let's close that down. We are going to minimize actually we can clear it so all the settings are going to stay the same so once we've set them here we don't have to change this because we still have to do oxygen and sulfur so let's just minimize it let's go back in here to image calibration we're going to add our files we're going to do our oxygen oops not our folder but our oxygen so select them here shift a little bit different because I'm not selecting them all with control a I'm having to actually pick them out so I hold the shift key down and click the last one that selects all of my oxygen flats here put them up I'm going to change the output directory folder to oxygen select that folder everything else is the same click apply go okay so all of the oxygen flats have been calibrated so let's go back let's make them all into one so add files three 
Uh, so control A. And remember we did all our settings, so we don't have to change those. So just apply global. All right, so here they come in. Close our high, close our low. Let's do a screen transfer. So once again, see that vignetting and our dust smoked. Must have that on my uh, image sensor. So it seems to be appearing in every one of the filters. So it must be either in the, uh, God, on the uh, focal reducer or the image sensor. Okay, check that out. All right, so file, save as. Um, we're just gonna call this 03 flat. Let's call it master flat so we know. I just like saying that. Master flat. Sounds like a DJ in the 80s. And 32 bit. Save it. Close that out. Clear it. Go back in here to image calibration. Clear it. Our files. Scroll down here to S2. We're going to do all this together. Select our sulfur. Everybody's good. Apply global. Super bias. Master Dark. They're doing their thing against each one of these uh, flat frames. Process Explorer is telling us quickly what's happening. I try to read this sometimes. Sometimes I can pick out numbers. You know, like 30... 130. Okay, so all of our sulfur has been calibrated. Open up inter image integration, add files. Ah, you know what we did? I did it live for you. Watch, I didn't change the output directory. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you say, hey, Steve? Look, there, there, there. It just went to the auction folder. So let's select it. Shift. See, I told you. Right click, we're going to go cut. Oops, go into our sulfur and paste. Okay. Select them all, open them up. It's integrated into one image, fly global. So, doing your calibration, stacking, all that stuff in Pixensight the more manual way you're going to have a lot of files so just get ready to eat up some hard drive space all right so let's close our high and low rejection just for the heck of it once again same little dust mode got to check out something there but it's cool because that tells you kind of what's going on so this is a master sulfur flat file save as um Go S2 Master. Click save. 32 bit. Okay, so image integration, image calibration. Let's go here to file. Alright, so here is everything we created. Image integration, image calibration are your two main tools. These are super bias. And our master flat sulfur, our oxygen flat, our master dark, stretch M, um, our HA flat, and our sulfur flat again for some reason. <laughs> so there's everybody. So we will add these um, into the uh, weighted batch preprocessing script when I go to stack all my lights when I'm done shooting on the monkey head nebula. So I hope you didn't find this too boring because it really is necessary to learn some of these steps and follow along with that light vortex, try it yourself. It's a long process, especially if you're shooting narrow band, uh, figure six hours to get everybody, to get three drizzled uh, frames ready to combine. You're almost like at the end of it, you're almost so sick of it, you don't even wanna process it because you've been dealing with it all damn day. But it's good to learn. It's a good process to learn to know what's going on. Uh, and it makes you appreciate these automated scripts and programs that do this for you. So check out the, uh, the image at the end of the Monkey Head Nebula. And um, go Bucks. I hope I'm not watching this video like 
later on down the road and going, ugh, whatever. All right. Clear skies and clear minds.